Hello. <laughs> How's everybody tonight? How you blessed and highly flavored? Oh, what a good night today. <laughs> God is good. All the time. All the time. Oh, la chalamiam branda kashira begisa bogoso. We are definitely in a time and in a season in an area where there's great transition. And as we were worshiping, you know, I saw trenches being dug out. Trenches. And and then I see them filling with oil. And then I saw them being lit on fire. I want you to know that there is an area to where he is moving everything for his kids, his children, right now. It's happening. You're going to see things that... Uh, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. I'm telling you. See, he's, he's saying in the one song, he's saying we're exchanging uh, the old flame for a new fire. Those are old desires and old flames and things. That, some things are old relationships, old jobs, old whatever it may be. He's exchanging them for what he's placing now in the trench that's on fire. Everything is becoming new. Everything. There's going to be a tremendous transition. And, and, and in this, there's going to be more of a release. You're going to see more wickedness. You're going to see more stuff going on in the demonic world. But it will never touch us. <laughs> Why? Because if you're on fire, they can't touch you. Amen? Amen? Everything right now is such a move. And there's so many things that God is doing for your life behind closed doors that you have no idea. So much. So stop worrying. Stop trying to figure it out. Amen? And stop looking back. Because it will cause delay. Don't worry about anybody else. God's got it. You stay in position, everything else falls into place. See, he's looking for bond servants. He's raising up bond servants right now. What is a bond servant? It's one who's bound in spirit. Does everybody get it? He's bound in the spirit. He is a bond servant. Does everybody understand that? Oh, glory. Let's go somewhere. <laughs> Bound in spirit. First Peter chapter five. Remember everything that you have gone through, everything you're gonna go through, you're gonna go through. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> as long as you don't look be in the back of it and try and fix that circumstance, you'll go through. <laughs> So many people are still standing in the puddle of affliction and not willing to come out. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Bound in spirit. The word tells us that Jesus was led by the spirit and he was also driven by the spirit. Paul was bound in the spirit. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, is everybody there? Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Let me tell you, a prideful, arrogant, self-seeking, 
individual's heart will put out the fire. <laughs> right out. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. In other words, he's saying, look at, there's something I'm going to do for you if you just get out of the way and quit trying to figure out and get, get out of yourself and becoming prideful because it's going to quench everything. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion and seeking whom he may what? He's going to devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Again, when the enemy tells you you're the only one, it's a lie. And may the God of all grace, his plan, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a little while, that's just training, you'll be perfected, you'll be established, you'll be strengthened, and you will be settled so you'll be no longer moved by the enemy. Humility, humbleness, is a key that will position you to be bound in the Spirit. Why? Because in that, there's a level of denying yourself. To be prideful is to have an unstable and unloyal heart. We talked a little bit about an unloyal heart where God was looking for loyal hearts. You may be doing all the right things, but not have a loyal heart. We want to be bound in the Spirit, and this is where God is bringing us to. You know, you can't flow in those areas unless you are bound in the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5. Verse Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Nobody's there yet? <laughs> Anybody there now? Verse 13, let's speak it together. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty or freedom... Only don't use this liberty or freedom as an opportunity for the what? Flesh, because it will quench everything. But through love, serve one another. Serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become consumed by one another. I say, then walk in a spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so you do not do the things that you wish. So to walk in the spirit is to be bound in the spirit. That means yoked. You are yoked with the spirit of God. Amen? You are yoked. Everyone say, I'm yoked with the spirit of God. The Bible says that the anointing breaks the yokes of bondage. So if you're yoked with the Spirit of God, that anointing through the divine nature is going to break every other bondage off of your life. If you're bound, you are yoked with the Spirit of God. Yoked is together. You are inseparable. You are one with the Spirit. There is a perfect union of position to activate the mind of Christ through the divine nature. Which brings understanding. You are able to understand and you are able to wait for the perfect will of God. You are never an anxious person. When anxiety, anxiousness comes, you say, no. When you need to make a quick decision, you say, wait. I don't care what has to be done. Does everybody understand it? Why? You're bound in the Spirit. Why? Because if you're, if you're bound in the Spirit, you know that the Spirit is going to take you where you need to be. So many times the enemy's trying to unyoke us with the spirit. So we walk in the soulish arena, the carnal mind, the desires of the world. You know, the enemy's always trying to implement 
desires in us to mislead us, to distract us, to confuse us, or to make us move before God. Amen? But there is a difference. Again, when you are yoked together with the Spirit of God, you are inseparable. You are one, you are in a perfect union of position to activate the mind of Christ through the divine nature so that you have understanding of the will of God and able to wait for the will of God, the perfect will of God to manifest. Why? Because when you're bound in the Spirit, you're looking for perfect. Everything is perfect, 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 perfect. You don't no longer settle for good. You wait for best. Because God has the best for us. Too many people are living in good and missing all the best that God has for them. And, of course, one of the areas is that because their heart's unloyal. They don't have a loyal heart. They're not consistent and so forth. In Romans chapter 8, in verse 12, anybody there? I'm only kidding. Hallelujah. I love that song, New Wine. It is so prophetic what's happening right now. So prophetic. In verse 12, Romans 8, 12, let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to so live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. If you're led by the Spirit of God, are you bound in the Spirit? Yes. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. That's fellowship. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then we are heirs of God. And what? Join heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Wow. We are bound in the Spirit. It can only be accomplished by putting the deeds or the desires of self to death. We are joint heirs of Christ. That means you are joint heirs of Christ, his divine nature, his promises. Everything that he has is yours. And everything that you have is his. Amen. That's being bound in the spirit. So you're not trying to hold on to anything. You're not a hoarder. Amen. You give anything away, whatever God says, give away. It doesn't matter. Why? Because anything God says, give away, you know he's going to give you better. See, he's trying to get us to a place where we're willing to let go of the things that were good and advance to the best. This is what this is all about right now. And this whole transition and the whole body of Christ, the whole body of Christ is being promoted into another area of best. There'll be those who will fall with it and flow with it. And there'll be those who are still consistent in holding on to what is good and not letting go to receive best. I'm telling you that there is a, a new flame to be exchanged for a new fire. We are in this right now. There's a new fresh anointing. There's an aggressive anointing. There's fresh oil coming. And there is God is making a path where you're uh, digging places and making trenches and making a way for each and every one where you've never even could imagine. You just got to hold on. You must be consistent. You must be loyal. You must be loyal to his presence, to his house, to his calling, to his purpose, and to his desires. And not our own. Amen? Acts 20. Glory.
Acts chapter 20 and verse 17. Everybody there, verse 17. For Miltius he sent Ephesus and called for elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I was always lived among you, serving the Lord with all what? Humility. So is, humility is a key. Amen. It's the key that keeps us in position. For what? God's plan, God's will. Serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go what? Bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. For indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone, preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of any blood of a man. So powerful. What did he say? Man, I'm going, this is bound in the spirit. With complete trust and knowing persecution awaits, no fear. Didn't matter. What do you say? Listen, man, I, I've been through so many things that every time God has delivered me from. You know what? You wouldn't be here if God didn't deliver you from something already. We'd either all be dead or in prison. <laughs> He's always there. Why? Because there's so much more He has a plan for us. And, get, and it's about to be unleashed. And this has nothing to do with abilities or talents or age or anything. It's about a loyal heart. It's about being loyal to him. Being loyal to his house and his things. Why? Because he's looking for loyal, faithful stewards. He's looking for those that will seek him and be faithful and complete those things he's asking us to complete. Bound in the spirit. And 2 Corinthians 3. They're soul bound. Second Corinthians three and verse one. Hallelujah. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ Toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. I want you to know the ministers of the new covenant, those are individuals that are bound in spirit, not in flesh or soul. He said, look at, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives what? Life. Bound in the spirit. Wow. Life. Ministers of the new covenant is to be bound in the spirit, bringing life. 
carrying life, expressing life. Wherever you go, you're changing an atmosphere of death into an atmosphere of life. If you notice, sometimes when you first gather together, you're, the mind is everywhere, thinking about things you didn't do, you should have done it, how you should have done it, who you need to call, who you shouldn't have called, you know, maybe what prayer you missed or whatever it is. But your mind goes everywhere. It's bouncing off all the walls in here. Until you get to about the third song, fourth song. Sometimes people need to get to the fifth and sixth song. And then all of a sudden things begin to change. All of a sudden everything that you thought of and everything that you were battling sometimes is gone. Boom, gone. Why? Because the presence of God just showed up and you got rebound in the spirit. Amen. So in this, this is where, you know what, again, that's why, heck, we ought to know that by now. Right? I mean, you know, we ought to know. So even though you know you're all over the place, you know that a few songs and you're in. <laughs> yes. Why? You just touched God's presence. God's touched your heart. There's a change. I'm telling you all kinds. I mean, and it does. Listen, I don't care who you are. It happens to everybody. No matter, you know, we can be bound in the spirit and, and still begin to drift from the spirit. Amen. It's like he's got stretched arms. You know, they really stretch on you. Come on over here, will you? <laughs> Trying to always call us back. Come on over here. And sometimes God, he's so cool. You know, it's like, again, I, you heard me say this before. The greatest God, game God plays is hide and seek. You know, he loves that game. And, and, and so in it, you, you'll be all of a sudden, yeah, man, I'm feeling the presence of God. And all of a sudden, Phew. where'd you go? He wants to know if you'll still be consistent. He wants to know if you'll still worship him, even if you don't feel like it. You know, because he's trying to get us out of the soulish and rebind us again to the spirit. Because the Spirit has nothing to do with anything. He's divine. Amen? And it's the divine nature of God. And He wants us to be one with Him. And man, when you are, the mind of Christ begins, is activated. Woo! It's like every light bulb in the earth just turned on. And you know everything. But you don't need to know anything because you don't care about anything. Even though you know it. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Isaiah 57. In verse 15. Let's speak it for thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a what? Contrite and humble spirit. That means bound. I mean, isn't there anything greater than being bound to God Almighty? To revive the spirit of humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. This is phenomenal. He wants us to stay, and again, the key of activation is humbleness. Amen? When you're humble, you're submissive, aren't you? When you're humble, you're out of the way. Remember the pride, he doesn't give grace to. He doesn't release the plan. And so many times people are, the longer that you're in a pride and arrogant, haughty attitude, you, the plan of God begins to drift further and further away. And then when you become humble, you start to grab some of God's plan again as he begins to slowly release it. Dwell with him who has a spirit of humility and a contrite heart. Why? Because you're yoked. Yoked and bound. 
Colos uh, Colossians 3. Colossians 3, verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are what? Above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. What else? Come on, read it with me. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ. Say it again. For you died and your life is hidden with in Christ, in Christ in God. For when Christ, who is our life, Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him. Why? Because you're bound in spirit. Hmm. Therefore, put to what? Death. Your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. And what else? Because of these things, the what? Wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the what? The new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in and all. Therefore, as the elect, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you shall also do, must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Again, this is bound in spirit. Amen. This is an individual who is bound in spirit. And Luke chapter 9. Luke 9, 23. Then Jesus said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it a man if he gains the whole world and that he himself is destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words of him, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in his glory, in his fathers, and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Again, we go back to the area of denying ourselves. There is a level of death to become bound in spirit. I mean... There is a level of death. It's a qualification. There's a level where you must deny yourself to receive something from God. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 25. Second Chronicles chapter 25.
in verse 1. Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehonadan of Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a what? Loyal heart. See, again, there are people that are doing the right thing, but their heart's not loyal. So they're inconsistent. You can't, God can't trust a individual with a, on the Lord, not with a loyal heart. So they were, were they bound in the spirit? No. They were bound in their soulish. They weren't bound in the spirit. So they are, they think sometimes people are doing things to please God because of fear of hell. That's not relationship. <laughs> That's a terrible place. That's a terrible way to be with Father. <laughs> oh, if I don't do this, I'm going to end up in hell. That's not how he looks at things. Believe me, you got a long way before you go to hell. Amen? He chastens, he warns, he does everything. And even when we still blow it, he's still there. He still has the last say. No matter what. He's not trying to send people to hell. People send themselves to hell. Amen? But he's trying to bring us life and what? Life abundant. Praise God. In Psalm 15. It's an area, again, where you're either gaining trust or losing trust with him. And even if you've lost trust with him at one time, you can regain it again. Before you go to hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 1. Let's roll it. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill, he, he who what? Walks uprightly, who works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. He who does not put out his money at usury. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Why? He, this is a qualification to be a bound in the spirit, man. Amen? Bound in the spirit. There you are, verse 15. 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4, starting at verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your bond servants, your what? Bond servants. For Jesus' sake, in other words, these individuals are bound in spirit. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this what? Treasure in what? Earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, 
that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal bodies. Wow. We are bond servants. That means bound in spirit. And I'm going to close at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2, verse 1. We are yoked in the Spirit as oneness. That is a bondservant. Hallelujah. This is not a Baal's bond. Amen. This is a bondservant. It's not a Baal's bondman. We're not Baal's bondmen. Amen. <laughs> Bondsman, whatever it is. Hallelujah. You may bail somebody out going to hell. I can tell you to tell them the truth, that's for sure. Verse 1, let's speak it. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of the love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even in the death of the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and has given him the name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. We are bound in the spirit as bond servants. We are yoked in one, and we don't want to be separated from the spirit of God. Amen. We don't want to drift into the flesh or into the soul, and especially into the desires of the world. Amen. Everybody cool? Well, get hot, will you? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace, and that this seed that's been imparted in us would be protected and bound in spirit in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah.